Hi guys, here's a video going over section 1.8, combinations of functions. So in this video, you will learn how to perform function operations, as well as finding the composition of functions. So the first thing we're going to look at is function operations. Function operations include adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. So if I look at this example, it says f of x is negative x squared. This is going to be my purple function. I'm going to color coordinate. g of x is 2x minus 1. That is going to be my pink function. And I want to find each of the following. So the first problem says f plus g of x. So this, I'm actually going to rewrite it. I like to rewrite it in this form of f of x plus g of x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the functions in the right spot. So my f of x is the negative x squared. My g of x was the 2x minus 1. And the operation that I want to do is addition. So I want to add these two together. Now if I look at that, I would want to combine like terms if I could. In this case, I have nothing that can combine. So here is your final answer. I'm going to do the same thing for subtraction. So I'm going to rewrite this as f of x minus g of x. So again, my f of x was negative x squared. My g of x is the 2x minus 1. And what I want to do is I want to subtract. Now, subtraction you have to be really careful with because with subtraction, you are um, subtracting this entire quantity of 2x minus 1. So anytime you're subtracting, that second function that you're subtracting always has to be in parentheses. From there, we need to distribute the minus into the parentheses so our signs are all correct. So I have negative x squared. Negative times 2x is negative 2x. Negative times negative 1 is positive 1. So there is your simplified answer. Now if you did not put the parentheses, what's going to happen is this last term is going to have the wrong sign. You would have minus 1 instead of plus 1. Multiplication, still the same thing. I'm going to rewrite this as f of x times g of x. So my f of x is negative x squared. My g of x is 2x minus 1, and I want to multiply these two. So multiplication, we usually use parentheses for that. Um, and then from here, I just want to distribute. So negative x squared times 2x is negative 2x cubed. Negative x squared times negative 1 is positive x squared. And again, there's nothing to combine, so there is your final answer. For the quotients, Again, I'm going to rewrite this as f of x over g of x. So my f of x was the negative x squared. My g of x is 2x minus 1. And we want to divide. So once again, if you could simplify it further, I would want you to do that. But nothing reduces because you can't really factor anything to get something to cancel out. So there is your quotient. Now the quotient, we do ask for domain because domain for quotients um, are important because you can never, ever, ever divide by zero. So that denominator can never equal zero. So I'm going to write this as 2x minus 1, and that cannot equal zero. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That gives me 2x cannot equal 1. Divide by 2, so that means x cannot be 1 half and that will be your domain. So your domain would be every single value of x except 1 half, because if I were to put 1 half in for this x, that's going to give me a 0 in the denominator, and we can never divide by 0. So that is function operations with expressions. Now let's look at function operations with numbers. So I'm going to look at f plus g of 3 uh, for the first one. My f function is x squared plus 5 g function is 3x minus 8. So I want to calculate f of 3 plus g of 3. Now to do that, I'm going to calculate each one of these individually. So I'm going to start with f of 3 first. I'm going to plug in 3 for x because that's my input. So that's 3 squared plus 5. 3 squared is 9 plus 5 is 14. Now I'm going to do the same thing for g, so now I want to find g of 3. 
So that gives me three times three minus eight. So that's nine minus eight, which is one. And my original problem was f of three, which is 14, plus g of three, which I now know is one. So final answer is 15. Um, I'm gonna temporarily skip letter B and jump to letter C because it's the same concept. So I'm gonna write this as f of seven times g of seven. So I wanna find f of seven first. That is seven squared plus five. So 49 plus five is 53. And then I want to find g of seven. So I'm gonna plug in seven into my g function. So that's three times seven minus eight. So 21 minus eight is 13. And then for my final answer, it was f of seven, which is 53, times g of seven, which is 13. 53 times 13 is 689. I did something wrong, because the answer is supposed to be 702. What did I do wrong? 49 plus five is not 53. Now, if you guys could talk to me, you'd probably be like, Mrs. Zolden, that's so wrong. There we go. So that's gonna be 54. Sorry. See, teachers make mistakes too. Okay, so 54 times 13 is 702. Cool. All right, now D, F of negative one divided by G of negative one. I'm gonna calculate each one individually. So F of negative one, please make sure you put negative one in parentheses before you square it. So negative one squared plus five is going to give me six. And G of negative one is going to be three times negative one minus eight. So that is negative 11. So I have six over negative 11. You can go ahead and write it like this, or typically you'll see me write it with my negative in the numerator. So either one of those would be fine with me. Okay, so going back to letter B. So what makes letter B different is that you are subtracting, um, but your input is also an expression and not just a numerical value. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this. I'm gonna write this as f of 2k minus g of 2k. And I wanna find both of those individually. So I'm gonna start with f of 2k. That is 2k squared uh, plus five. So 2k squared, I'm gonna square the two, which is four. I'm gonna square the k, which is k squared plus five. Now I want to find g of 2k. Well, that is three times 2k minus eight which is 6k minus eight. Now my operation says to take f of 2k, which is the 4k squared plus five, minus my g of 2k, which is 6k minus eight. But again, anytime you are subtracting, that second function has to be in parentheses. So now I'm gonna distribute the minus so I can get my signs correct. So it's 4k squared plus five, minus 6k plus eight. And then combining like terms, I have 4k squared minus 6k, and then five plus eight is 13. All right, so that is function operations. The next thing we are going to shift to is the composition of functions. So the composition of two functions, which will denote with an open circle, f of g, is taking a function and putting it inside another function. So you would read this f of g of x, and it also has the same notation over here, um, the same reading over here in a different notation. So f of g of x with the function actually on the inside. So we have two examples here. I have f of x, which is x squared plus two, g of x, which is x minus seven, and the first one we wanna do g of f of x. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this so that it is a function in a function. So I have g of f of x 
So what I want to do is I want to replace this f of x with my actual f function, which is x squared plus 2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x squared plus 2, and that has now become my input into my g function. So instead of writing x minus 7, instead of my x, I am going to put x squared plus 2, and then finishing off the rest of that g function, minus 7. So this right here, if I look at my original g function, was what we had for x, which was our input. And our input just so happened to be x squared plus 2. So now I'm going to combine like terms. That gives me x squared minus 5. For the next one, we want to do the composition in the opposite direction. So instead of g of f, we're going to do f of g. It's a similar process. So I want to replace my g function inside. So I'm going to rewrite this as f of. And my g of x was x minus 7. So what's happening here is I'm going to take this x minus 7 and I'm going to put it in to this x into my f function. Okay, so my f function is x squared, so my input squared plus 2. It's just that now my input is x minus 7. Now x minus 7 squared, you do need to multiply it out. I'll go ahead and do it on this side over here. So x minus 7 squared is the same thing as x minus 7 times another x minus 7. So you have to multiply that out. So distribute x squared, distribute negative 7x, distribute negative 7x, distribute positive 49. Combine like terms. So I have x squared minus 14x plus 49. So that gives me x squared minus 14x plus 49 plus my 2. And then combining like terms, I now have x squared minus 14x plus 51. All right, let's continue. We're using the same functions, x squared plus 2 and x minus 7. So for letter C, we're doing g of g of x. So it looks a little weird. We're taking a composition of itself. But again, you're just paying attention to inputs. So I'm going to write this as g of x minus 7. Oh, forgot to color coordinate. Let's try that again. My g of x was pink, x minus 7. And what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to put it into my x back into the g function. So when I write this, it's going to be x minus 7 minus 7. I can combine like terms. That gives me x minus 14. And the last thing we're doing with the composition is actually calculating it numerically. So I can write this as g of f of 25. So the first thing I want to do is calculate f of 25. So it would be 25 squared uh, plus 2. So 25 squared is 625 plus 2 is 627. And now that becomes my input into my g function. So the 625 was this, f of 25. So now I can calculate g of 27. So this becomes my input into my g function. So I'm going to plug that in for that x. And that gives me 627 minus 7, which is 620. All right, so that concludes the video for section 1.8.